Well, hey there. Thanks for joining us today. My name's Dave, and whether you're joining us at home or maybe you've gathered together at our Morlap or Barrable Hills congregations, we're so glad that you're part of our service today. Today is One Care Sunday, an opportunity to hear stories of hope, hear stories of transformation, and stories of impact from our partner in mission, One Care Geelong. But before we do that, we want to turn our attention to our Heavenly Father from where our hope comes from. Our Heavenly Father who's given us a living hope in Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you right now in this moment to take these songs and use them as a declaration of the goodness of God, a declaration of the hope that we have in Him through Jesus. Let's sing together. Let's sing. I was buried beneath my shame And who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you
your goodness, Lord. We thank you that we can read about your goodness in the Bible, that we can know your goodness in our lives, Lord, and that we can just rest on that. Rest that we serve a good and faithful God who loves us and just wants us to be near to Him. We are confident in You, Lord. Confident in Your love, Lord. And when we aren't feeling that, Lord, or when we're not really believing that, Lord, we just ask that You would speak into those parts of us, Lord. Help us to have that faith, Lord. To be reminded once again of how good you are.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for the confidence that comes from knowing that You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. Father, we thank You for the confidence that comes from knowing that our sins have been forgiven. And Lord, today we thank You for the confidence that comes from knowing that You have put Your Holy Spirit in us to lead us, to guide us, to empower us to be Your people here on earth. Heavenly Father, we pray that we would continually build our lives on You as the rock and foundation of all things, Lord, and from that, that our confidence would come. Lord, we thank You that we can know You. Lord, we thank You that that You desire to spend time with us and to, to grow us and to be with us. And Lord, we just seek after You today. Lord, we just pursue after You. Lord, we look forward to what You're gonna do in and through us. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen. Don't you just love the words of that song? It just reminds us of where our confidence comes from. No matter what is going on in our lives around us, in the world around us, no matter what, we can have confidence in God. And that confidence comes as we get to know Him more, as we seek Him in prayer, as we seek Him through His Word, our confidence grows. We really want to encourage you, you know, you to, to seek God. Ask Him to build that confidence as you understand Him more in your daily walk in a relationship with Him. Today, we want to share some really exciting news with you. There's a much-loved couple in our church, Steve and Ailey Rittmeyer, who have recently become a much-loved family by welcoming into their lives their firstborn child, little Nate James, born on the 9th of June. We're so excited for those guys. Want to encourage you to get around them, send them a message, cook them a meal, just bless them, buy them some baby clothes, anything to just, you know, encourage them as they start this baby journey. Uh, For those who are parents, you know that there's no handbook that comes with this thing. You're kind of on your own and you kind of look to see what other people are doing and try to copy that, what kind of looks good, what makes sense. So get around them. But we're so excited for you guys. We love you heaps and we can't wait till we can all be back together and meet this little man in person uh, and see you guys and give you a COVID COVID safe hug, if there's such a thing. Hey, uh, as I said before, today is... One Care Sunday. And we're going to delve into that a little bit more really shortly. But want to let you know that if you are watching on the service today at our 9.30 streaming service, that at the end of the service, we're having a post-church chat with the One Care team over Zoom. So if you're watching the 9.30 service at the conclusion, go to our church website. You'll see a little button that says link tree. Hit on that. You'll see there a connection point to our post-church chat with the One Care team. That is a mouthful. If you're attending in person at our Moolap or Barrowwood Hill campuses, there'll be a few of the uh, One Care team around as well. And uh, they're there to take your questions, have a bit more of a chat with you and just unpack the incredible work that One Care is doing. We've got a bit of an update from our senior pastor, Matthew Jacoby. So let's check that out. Hi folks, Matt here. I wanted to provide you an update on our Sunday services. This week, restrictions further relaxed across a number of sectors, which allows us some more freedom uh, for gathering together. Although this is great news, there are still a number of factors that impact our experience of meeting together on a Sunday. The density quota that changed from one person per two square metres to one person to four square metres about a month ago, this remains unchanged. This means that the maximum number of people allowed in our chapels at both locations is really quite underwhelming and would accommodate less than half of those who have been regularly attending our services. We're also still required to wear masks for the entire time that we are in the building. So, with due consideration to this and a number of other factors, we made the call to go online only this weekend. We as a leadership team are constantly looking at the options open to us to move back to live in-person services as soon as possible. And we'll continue to do so with the heart to accommodate as many people as possible and also to ensure that it's a great experience for all. So, thank you so much for your continued faithfulness and patience as we keep inching ever closer to full in-person services. Again, bless you. 
Well, we've got the opportunity now to hear uh, more about OneCare from some of the OneCare team. I've got with me on stage Claire Foreman, who's the CEO of OneCare. Disclaimer, she's also my wife. And we also have Lee Waters, who is the coach coordinator for OneCare. Disclaimer, she is not my wife. Thanks for <laughs> joining us today. Uh, look, over the past few months, you know, since we came back together uh, at, uh, at church in person, um, you know, at the start of this year, we've seen a lot of new faces joining us, both in person and online, and that's just been incredible. Uh, Claire, mindful of those people who may be new to One Hope, uh, can you just remind us uh, what is One Care, who are you, and what do you do? Okay, so One Care is a community hub, and One Care was actually established by One Hope back in 2009. So our programs and services revolve around the idea of supporting those that are socially isolated, disadvantaged, and marginalised, while also supporting those that are going through life struggles. So we've had lots of different programs over the years. At the moment, we currently have four main programs. We have our community meal and our community food bank, and we also have our coach mentoring program, which Lee's going to tell you a bit more about and our affordable counselling service. So that's us in a nutshell and we can yeah, unpack that as we go. Great. It's literally been a year to the day uh, since Claire and I and some of the other One Care team uh, set up here on stage and we had uh, COVID One Care 2020. Uh, on that day, uh, Claire really sort of explained for us how One Care was responding to the needs of Geelong in the context of COVID, you know, considering the, both the social and the economic uh, impacts of COVID on the community. You're really sort of uh, responding and scaling up your efforts. Uh, Claire, can you tell us what, what's happened in that last 12 months since there was a really big bang of activity? What's One Care been doing since then? Uh, well, to be honest, most of it's a blur, but, you know, I'll have to tell you something. <laughs> no, look, it's been incredible. So, yes, the year was insane for, you know, I guess most people would have experienced some sort of crazy through last year. But, yeah, One Care as a team, like, the incredible team we had around us, we basically just rallied up and did what we needed to do to make sure things kept going. So um, we've talked a lot about how with our meal program that we really increased that last year. Um, but since we've spoke to you last year... Um, we've actually had a lot of really positive changes in that space as well with our community meal program. Um, you might remember that we uh, adapted our meal program to a pickup service so we could still support people. Um, and that program um, slowly but surely sort of developed into what we currently know as our community food bank. So through the needs of the community uh, and that service being used um, and numbers going up, which they're even currently still going up as the weeks go on, we really felt that that service was really, really important. So when we were able to, um, which didn't happen until October last year, we resumed our community meal and we have been doing that in a COVID safe way as much as we can. Um, but we also decided to keep the food bank as a permanent program, um, yeah, of One Care. Brilliant. Love, love hearing that dynamic response uh, in the midst of a crisis. Uh, now, I'm, you know, aware that not only are the, those sort of food relief services and food security, uh, counselling is a part of, of what One Care does. What does that sort of look like in, in the course of the past year? Yeah. So our, our wonderful counsellors have, you know, really adapted to counselling in an online fashion and back to face-to-face -face and back to online and back to face-to-face. -face and, and look, you know, our counsellors are amazing and they want to make sure they're supporting everyone how they can. So, you know, I real kind of applaud to them. But since last year, our, some of our lovely counsellors moved on to other things and we welcomed three beautiful counsellors, um, April Rook, Ed Sharp and Yvonne Sharp. And they all happen to be members of One Hope. So um, they are gorgeous people, as most of you would know who know them. They're absolutely gorgeous people to deal with. They're highly qualified um, and highly professional and we are absolutely blessed to have them um, at the team in the team. Fantastic, that's, that's great. Uh, now I mentioned that there's lots of new faces to uh, One Care with a lot of people you know, visiting and joining our church, One Care, One Hope, visiting and joining our church. Uh, Lee, you're, you would be a new face to a lot of people. Okay. Uh, you're playing an incredibly important role at One Care. Can you just uh, maybe introduce yourself, uh, tell us where you attend church and you know, what your role is at One Care? All right, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be at, at One Care with Claire, who does an amazing job. Uh, I go to Church by the Bay down on the beautiful Bellarine. Great place to be. Uh, I'm a child of God. That's, I guess, my main claim to fame. Uh, I've known Jesus since I was about 12, but I think I've been aware of a loving God since, since I can remember. 
I'm, I was a wife, I'm a widow. Uh, I have two beautiful daughters who attend different churches in the area. I have six grandchildren, so they're my main, main and most important roles. Uh, I serve at my, my local church as well, Church by the Bay. I'm a horsewoman, uh, not a particularly good one, but I, I can understand both English and Western styles for you fellow horsies out there. Uh, I love animals, I love the arts, opera, and I'm a writer. So yeah, that's probably me. There's lots of other little things like there would be about everybody listening today. So that's that's me. I have no idea what English or Western styles is, or even what a horsewoman is, but that's great. Good on you. Um, they all know. Some, some of them are knowing going, yes. <laughs> uh, your role at One Care, Lee? My role at One Care is a very privileged one. Um, I get to meet all sorts of people, both as mentors and as, up, and as participants. So the participants are the mentees, the people that come and request uh, a mentor. And so it's my job to do um, a fair bit of administration around that. But uh, first of all, I found that difficult, but it's actually very important. And I, I'd really like you to know that the administration that envelops uh, the program makes it a very safe, very compliant program, that one that a church can be proud of. Um, so while, yes, it can take a while to get things going, uh, it's, it's really been very well written and very compliant. So my role is to make sure that those things are on the ground and done well so that the mentors and mentees can then just relax into a really helpful relationship. Thanks, Lee. And the program that Lee's talking about there is the Coach Mentoring Program. Uh, we've talking about it. We've talked about uh, Coach a number of times over the years. It's probably been a little while since we've so, sort of done a deep dive into Coach. Um, again, maybe Lee, do you want to remind us uh, exactly what is Coach? Uh, how does it work? Why is it important? Sure. Uh, as Claire said, we have some food security services, and uh, they're very important because if you haven't got food or shelter, then you're uh, not that we do shelter, but, you know, they're the first order things that people need to survive. But then after that, the thing that is offered in very, very, very few places is someone to listen to your story. And humans' greatest currency, the thing that we hold most dear is our story. So the mentor-mentee relationship in, in coach is about that. It's about being a focused friend for the story of the person who comes into the program. And those stories are as varied as human beings are, both the mentors or the mentees. So there's no, I think when I first came in, there'd be a particular type of person who might be a great mentor, but really it's not so because all the precious narratives, all those wonderful stories will be held by different people. So we require people in the full spectrum of life, whether you're someone that's at home, maybe with kids, or whether you're a tradesman or a professional, the hours that you give are not onerous. The honour that you give another human being's holy ground, their, their stories, is immense and leads to massive change. So really, and that's what Coach is about. It's about being a focused friend and, and uh, giving space for that wonderful story of the other human being to be held. And most of our participants would very rarely experience that. And to have your story made precious by another human being is as important as food, I think, because it gives you a reason to get up, a reason to keep going, a reason to keep writing your story and making it a positive one. Yeah, thanks, Lee. You can really get a picture from what you described there as to the to the impact and the need that the coach is meeting. Um, I'm I'm a people person, Lee. I love connecting and engaging with people, but the idea of mentoring sounds pretty formal, you know. So I guess the question, the following question, at least in my mind, maybe for others as well, is, you know, how do you become a mentor? Like, are you just given a mentee and off you go and you're on your own, or like, how does that even sort of unfold? That's a good question. And yeah, mentor is such a formal word and I sometimes play with it. I call it a focused friend, but that we don't use that term, you know, on paper, but that's what it is. To become a mentor requires training. And I've got to say the training, training package is pretty amazing. It's, uh, 
not difficult, not intellectually difficult, but it's very thorough. Only takes a day for the first part of it and then there's a little bit online. So it's it's not huge, but it is very thorough. So that's what you do to become a coach. Now, if you enter into the training, it doesn't mean you have to be a coach. And I would recommend to anyone who wants to go into any sort of ministry or work with people where you have to be sensitive and listening to people and being helpful towards people's lives, it's a really good unit to do. So that's the first part. Then if after that you think, yes, I think this is something that I really want to do, um, then you go on to have an interview. The interview is pretty thorough. Um, I don't go through your credit records or anything, but (laughs) it's fairly thorough. And that's for you as much as it is for the the program because you want to be a good fit too and you want to be comfortable in it too. So if you've gotten to the point where you think you want to volunteer, you'll have a fairly informal chat with me over an hour, over your coffee usually because I love to go out. And uh, then then after that, if we both feel that, yes, that's that's right for you and are going to go ahead, then a match will be made with a mentee or a participant. But at that point, you will be clear, I think, on the fact that you are going to go into a relationship, the mentor relationship, the best way to understand it is a focused friendship. So you'd be meeting, most people do it once a fortnight, maybe a phone call as well, but usually just once a fortnight. And before that, you will have recognised a few um, goals that the participant might really want to reach. Now, as a middle-class older woman, I sort of have my idea of what goals might be, but it really is highly variable. Uh, Some of the goals that we have would be uh, getting out of bed at a regular time, making it to meetings they set so it it might be your meeting that they come to, eating uh, more regularly and with greater health. Another one might be they're going through a very difficult um, split up in a relationship and they might want to just chat about that. You do not have to be an expert. You just have to be a focused friend. What are the goals of that person getting through? Maybe they want to disconnect and get a job or whatever that is. Your job will be to listen and encourage and maybe sit by them when they fill in a form or simple things like that. We all know what it's like to be alone when we have huge life challenges and you're filling that precious spot of being beside them not leading them, not taking over their lives. You're not a caseworker. You're a focused friend. I love that term, focused friend. I think there's something that we can all take from that, you know, whether it be f- through a formal program like coach or just in our own lives. Uh, and really over the years, uh, you know, a lot of people from One Hope have been involved as coach mentors and not just from One Hope, from churches across Geelong, really engaging and taking that opportunity to get alongside and just uh, showing God's love through that sort of focused friendship um, approach. Claire, we've heard a lot about uh, Coach. You've told us a lot about some of the other things that um, OneCare is doing. Uh, For those of us at One Hope, if we want to engage and connect and support uh, the work of OneCare, what can we do? Like, what are some tangible, practical ways that we could get involved? Uh, You can do a lot. And we'd love to see you. Um, little plug there for ourselves. Um, basically, go to our website. All our information's there. So onecaregealong.org.au. But we have lots of programs that are always running. The coach um, program that Lee's um, mentioned, I think really explained that really well. Um, Lee's got some training, I think on the 28th of June coming up. If you're interested at all, even if you're just a little bit a little bit interested or just want to know more about it, um, you can get in touch with us and Dave can tell you a bit more about that. Um, but we'd love to have you come along to the training, learn about that and see how you go. Um, we're always looking for volunteers for our community meal and also our food bank you can go to the website to find out more about that as well. Um, yeah, look, there's lots of opportunities for you to get engaged and we absolutely love our One Hope family being a part of it. Um, and later on, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the legends that have been um, helping out our organisation for a long time. So lots of opportunities. Great. Well, thank you, Claire. Thank you, Lee. Uh, I hope that's given you a bit of a picture of what's been happening at, at, uh, at One Care and the role that we can all play to support and engage. I want to share with you a video now that tells the story of Jason, who is a participant down at One Care. He's going through the coach program that we've heard about. So let's have a look at that now. My name's Jason and 
I've probably been connected to OneCare for about three years now and at first my mum got me down here just to have a meal and sort of make sure I was eating and stuff like that and then she introduced me to Nicole who's a community meals coordinator and she was just, I thought she was a bit scary at first to be honest, I still kind of do but um, yeah she's just awesome and she got me to help one day to sit up for a Christmas lunch and yeah just turned up ever since. I went from um, turning up to one care at the start just for a meal and not really wanting to be here out of embarrassment more than anything I guess to just sort of turning up because I've met a few people and got friendly with a few people and just turning up for a conversation and quick meal and then leave straight away and then hang around that little bit longer the following week and then yeah, just sort of wanted to sort of stay as long as I possibly was allowed to in the end and now they can't get rid of me. <laughs> it's It feels awesome to have just even the littlest amount of responsibility but being part of conversations where it comes to making decisions with how we set things up and all that makes me feel, yeah, more important and probably just a highlight of my day when I come here is probably just at the end of the day when we all sit down and sort of joke around once it's finished and clean up and it just it's just a good good vibe like good friendly vibe that almost a family type atmosphere so one has sort of made me feel more confident and willing to try new things and get to know new people and it's just good to know that I'm needed here as much as I need here. It's almost like coming here is an addiction in a way, <laughs> which is really weird, but it's just good to have that outlet, have someone to talk to you that's not going to judge you and look at you like you're some sort of trash kind of thing. And It's hard to get away from that thought process, but here's the only place I never, never even contemplate thinking like that. So I think one care is just the, one of the most caring and loving groups groups of people that y you'll ever meet, pretty much. It's just, they've done more for me than anyone could even imagine. Oh, I'll take a breath after that one. Um, oh, Jason. Um, Honestly, that is absolutely hitting me in the feels there. Um, Jason is a very special part of One Care. Um, and that is a really special story of a special guy. Jace began as one of our participants and now he's one of our volunteers. And to be honest, he's absolutely part of the furniture and we wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and honestly, in one way, it's a little bit hard to watch that, but it's also I have so much pride in seeing Jace feeling like he belongs. And that's exactly why we do what we do. So it is a privilege for me to be here uh, today to talk to you about One Care on One Care Sunday. Um, and as many of you would know, and as we mentioned before, um, One Care is one of One Hope's partners in mission, established way back in 2009 as One Hope's response to support the community needs in Geelong. And what's really lovely about that word is partner. And that gives that sense that we're in this together and we absolutely are. Partners work together. They have a similar mission, a similar end goal. They complement each other. They share resources and there is a sense of commitment. This partnership, like One Hope's other partners in missions, Red Frogs and Foundation 61, um, amazing organisations, is just another clear example of the church being the church. It's actually a lovely coincidence, if you could say that, that as a church we're going through Acts at the moment, which documents the rise of the early church, which is what I wanted to focus on today as we explore the idea of the church being the church. So I'd like to read to you a passage in Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. So read along with me if you like. In those days, when the number was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. 
So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. This proposal pleased the group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the Word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. This passage is such a beautiful and simple example of the church distributing tasks, assigning their roles. In this passage, there is a clear dispute happening. We're not actually going to focus on that today. But what I would like to highlight is that the early church took their responsibility seriously to take care of the widows. It's important to remember that in these times, widows often didn't have anything. They were on their own. They were unsupported. So the church really took their job seriously to take care of the widows. In our current worldview, it can be easy to read verse 2 with a bit bit of a negative tone. So I'll just read verse 2 again. It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word in order to wait tables. We might look at it that waiting tables or serving food is of lower importance. It's a little bit below what they're here to do. However, In this case, it's exactly the opposite. The apostles knew what they were called to do and that role shouldn't be neglected. But as we read on, we can see the commitment to ensuring that this task of distributing food to the widows was in fact taken very seriously. It wasn't fobbed off to whoever was standing in the corner with a couple of minutes to spare. This is the church being the church, dividing the task, working together. This story, of course, is very specific to the early church, but the picture here can reflect of how we can work together as a church, how one care can work with one hope, how you can work with your ministry leader, how a volunteer might work in the organisation that they're working for. These these roles, sorry, are no less important. The task of serving food was important. The call of pursuing the ministry of the Word important. The task of stacking shelves at the food bank, important. The task of preparing for your life group or Bible study, important. I'm sure most of us have heard the analogy of the church being the body, made up of different parts. And if we were all the same body part, we'd have a very dysfunctional and slightly wonky body. And nobody wants that. The reason we need different parts is there are different roles and we have different skills. There are different tasks to be done. At One Care, we certainly operate like this. Our team, our volunteers, they all bring different skills to the table. Without the variety, we would be far poorer and our efforts would be far less effective. We firmly believe that the power of friendship, the power of relational connection at One Care is absolutely transforming. I'm going to tell you a story about Dory and I'll try not to cry. I'm sharing this story with permission. Dory is a lovely Croatian elderly lady who has been coming to One Care for a little over a year. Her husband of 43 years sadly passed away four years ago. Dory doesn't have much and she is on her own. A beautiful woman who is severely socially isolated. The only social thing that Dory does once a week is come to One Care. In January this year, we welcomed our new program coordinator, Simone, aka The Church. Simone, a young woman in her 30s and dear old Dory, struck up a special friendship. Our gorgeous team will always stop to spend time with our participants and this is really important in, in what we do, why we do what we do, to listen, make sure they feel heard. We want our participants to not only feel cared for, but to know that we are sharing God's love. We are throwing it at them. We are pouring it all over them. And we have a very important job to do. So back to Dory. As the weeks and months went on, as Simone and Dory chatted each week, Simone did just that, what we talked about. She listened, she chatted, she provided that space. Dory was starting to feel like she was part of the family. 
One week, we had a huge supply of plums and Dory took a large bag of those plums home. And next week, she came back with jam, beautiful homemade plum jam. And she handed those out ceremoniously to our volunteers. And the joy in her eyes that she was part of something and contributing something was just absolutely beautiful. She was proud as punch. You couldn't help but see the sparkle in her eyes. The team loved their jam and it only encouraged Dory to do this again. Next, it was these beautiful little pastries. Dory came in and they got gobbled up relatively quickly and I will point no fingers, nor will I take responsibility, but Simone missed out and Dory was not having it. (laughs) So a few weeks later, Dory came back with a whole batch of these amazing little homemade pastries that were strictly for Simone. Now we have a photo here of Simone and Dory. Team, if you could put that up, that would be lovely. This particular day that this photo was taken is Simone's birthday. We have Simone on the left and uh, Simone on the right and Dory on the left. What for some would be considered a small gift? Dory came in that day and showered Simone with beautiful presents. Small to some, but for her, it was a reflection of her love and appreciation for this beautiful friend of hers. The tears in their eyes say it all, really. This woman feels valued and loved. A lovely, kind and precious woman who is always on her own, who spends most of her time in a small house by herself, comes to One Care once a week and when she's there, she's not by herself. She's part of something that matters and she feels like she belongs. This task, the role that Simone, our amazing team of volunteers play in waiting tables, in listening and being available is important. And it's the church being the church. Like any church, One Care could simply not do what we do without our amazing volunteers. Interestingly, I had a little task the other day when I was applying for a grant, I needed to crunch some numbers and figure out what the percentage of our work, of our total workload was done by volunteers, not paid staff. And I was actually quite surprised by the number, but we have 91% of One Care's total workload hours is done by volunteers. Now, if I had a room of people with me, or maybe you can just do this on your own, there'd be a bit of a woo, because that's amazing, honestly. It is absolutely incredible that we can do what we do at 91%. Um, That's not discounting the 9% of those that are paid, I'll just note that. But we are absolutely blessed to the back teeth to have uh, amazing volunteers a part of what we do. Our volunteers are coach mentors. They help at our community meal and they help at our community food bank. They cook, bake, pick up food, wait tables, unpack boxes, sort produce, mop floors. They spend time with participants. They listen. Then there's all the COVID things of the hand sanitizer and the counting numbers as they walk in the door. They organise events, they help with admin and they pretty much do whatever is needed. You know how with, you know, families and every family has one that there's always that reluctant child who is not actually going to set the table when you ask them to and they will reluctantly slam down those knives and forks with absolute disdain because they do not want to be doing this. Uh, They're part of the family but they are not interested in doing this job. Well, our volunteers don't do that. (laughs) Our volunteers are example of being the church. They are there, they are ready. They are not that reluctant child setting the table. They're excited about being a part of it. We are blessed with lots of amazing volunteers, many from One Hope, also many not from One Hope. I'd like to put just a little spotlight on some of our regular volunteers who do come from One Hope. I apologise for embarrassing you, sort of. Barb Jackson, who attends Moolap, is nothing short of a blessing to One Care. I know she is praying for our guys as they walk through the community food bank each Tuesday. Many of you may not be aware of Barb's amazing dancing skills. If you come down on a Tuesday, you just might see them. But we are absolutely delighted to have such a beautiful woman of God simply serving. She's always ready to help and that will often involve a sewing machine or an apron and a spatula. We also have the delightful Donna Paddle, also from Willap Campus. And she's an amazing regular volunteer. One day she walked in our front door, she helped. And to be honest, she's not really left and we love it. 
She may be quiet, but her camera skills, her skills with a laptop and being able to connect and listen to participants are second to none. We also have a little vivacious Kim Thomas that you saw up on the stage earlier, who attends our borough campus, who again has showed up and not left either. And her just tenacity and zeal for what she does is beautiful. We have, I could really go on for days and I probably, I probably will. We've also got incredible coach mentors that have been serving and connecting with those, um, with their participants for a really long time. Um, Pamela Barand, Sue Wild, and there's many, many more. I know that there are some today that I've not mentioned. You know who you are and we are so, so, so blessed to have you and we are so, so grateful. Thank you for being the church and for honouring God in what you do. I'd like to just highlight a little coach story. For many years, this story is from many years ago and a coach mentor who'd been supporting his mentee and their family were doing it really, really tough. He noticed that her house needed some repairs. On his own accord, with the help of a few other legends from his church, he organised a surprise working bee. And within hours, the group had done a tonne of work. The house was looking amazing. And when the participant came in and saw what they had done, she was absolutely lost for words. God's, loved, God's love was poured on her family. And this was another example of the church being the church. In Acts 4, Luke describes how the early church shared what they had. There was none among them who lacked anything. Those who owned land sold it and shared the proceeds. They distributed the proceeds, each as anyone had need. The beauty of this verse and what I think just stands out is the possessions aren't personal. They are mine as much as they are yours and they are there to be shared. It's a simple representation of the heart of the church, of family and of community. We often see this reflected in how we share food and how eager our church and our family can be to throw a meal together, drop it off to whoever needs it. Years ago, a very dear friend of mine was going through a really tough time and I organised an online meal schedule and sent it out to my friends in the hope that we might get enough people to do a meal for them for a month. I had so many people put their name down and put their name down twice that I had people who missed out. So I had to go back to all these generous people and said, could you please take your name off the list three times and just do it once so other people can join in? What a gorgeous problem to have. Um, that we actually had to put more effort in so more people can help. The church being the church. To be honest, I could go on for days with beautiful examples of the church being the church. And I'm sure if I asked you to share, you could do the same. The beauty of the church is we are called by Jesus to be a part of this. It is by His grace that we are blessed to be a part of this incredible family. The accounts of the early church are nothing short of miraculous. As the church increased rapidly, the church faced adversities, miracles were plentiful and the name of Jesus spread throughout the land. Let's be reminded that it is by God's grace that we are blessed to be part of the church and let's stand tall and be proud of that. I'm going to ask the music team to come up. Our church can be a big church, a small church, a group of friends, a church online, a community organisation, wherever two or three are gathered. It can be in many, many forms. We as part of the church have a role to play. I certainly can't tell you what that role is for you. But I do know that God knows what that role is for you. You may already be doing it. You might have a little bit of a, a feeling in your heart that you were a bit nervous. Oh, I thought about doing coach, I don't know. Or there's that awesome organisation or the salvos or whatever it might be. Maybe lean into that. If there's that little niggle to step outside, if there's that niggle to go, oh, Sally's been asking about the, the ministry team here, maybe I'll give it a go. Give it to God and see what that lands, see what it looks like for you. We're really privileged to be a part of the Kingdom of God and be part of the church. So I encourage you today to, to take a step into that, to give it to God and ask Him to show you where He wants you to be. It could be part of, like I said, one of the ministry teams, volunteering, 
or simply knocking on your neighbour's door with a lasagna in hand. So church, let's continue to be the church, preaching the Gospel and sharing God's love from the rooftops. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, what a privilege it is for us to be in Your church, to be in Your Kingdom. Father God, we are just so blessed to call You God. We are so blessed that You sent Your Son for us, Father God. Father, I pray that You would remind us of the beauty of this church that You've created and called us to be a part of. Thank You, Father God. Thank You for blessing us to be used to honour You, to honour Your church, to glorify Your Name. Lord, I pray that if anyone has any little niggles or they're nervous or anything like that, Father, that they want to step forward into something but they don't know how, I pray You guide them. Give them, give them what they need. Show them where to go. But above all, Lord, I pray that we would just be reminded to love, to smile, to listen, to stop and to wait. Thank You, Father God, for the love that You pour out on us, Sovereign Lord. We pray these things in Your holy and precious Name. Amen.
let's make the words of that song the prayer of our lives, the prayer of our church, that we would build our lives on the love of God. And as we do that, we would share His love with those around us. Thank you for being part of our service today. If you would like prayer support, if you'd like to connect with one of our pastors, please visit our church website. We have a connect card and we can uh, connect you and get in contact with you, give you the support you need for whatever you're going through at this point in time. If you've been moved today by the stories of One Care, as I know I've been, encourage you to visit the One Care website. There you can find out how you can volunteer. You can find out how you can engage with the organisation and learn more about what they do. And you can also financially give to the work of One Care. I want you to visit onecaregeelong.org.au. You can give, you can connect, you can engage, you can volunteer. Thanks so much for being part of the service. We'll look forward to you joining us next time.